Lord Reid will explain the decision of the court. This appeal arises from an accident of an everyday kind, but raises a number of significant questions relating to legislation governing health and safety at work, and expert evidence in that field. The appellant was employed by the respondents as a home carer. She had to visit clients in their homes and provide them with personal care. Shortly before Christmas uh, 2010, she had to visit an elderly lady who was terminally ill and required palliative and personal care. She lived in the suburbs of Glasgow. There had been severe wintry conditions for several weeks. The footpath leading to the lady's house was on a slope and was covered in snow and ice. It had not been treated. The appellant slipped and fell and was injured. She sought compensation from the respondents for having failed to comply with the relevant health and safety legislation and for negligence at common law in failing to provide her with attachments for her footwear which would have reduced the risk of slipping. Her claim succeeded before the judge in the outer house of the Court of Session, the Lord Ordinary, but his decision was overturned on the respondent's appeal to the inner house. She now appeals to the Supreme Court, which unanimously allows her appeal. The appeal raises a number of issues, but three are of particular importance. First, uh, the judges of the inner house considered that the Lord Ordinary had erred in relying on evidence given by an expert witness. The witness was qualified as a consulting engineer and had long professional experience of health and safety practice. He gave evidence about accepted practice in this area, including the practice of other employers who provided their staff with anti-slip attachments, and about the effect of wearing such attachments, as described in the literature and on the basis of his own experience of wearing them. The inner house considered that health and safety was not an area of expertise, and that the evidence on which the judge had relied should not have been admitted. This court disagrees. It was relevant for the judge to hear evidence about knowledge and experience in relation to health and safety in this field, about the practice of other employers, and about the effectiveness of the attachments. Secondly, the inner house interpreted the relevant health and safety legislation as being concerned only with risks caused by the nature of a task performed by the employee, such as in this case, the administration of care to the clients, and not, therefore, with risks arising from the natural environment. Again, this court disagrees. The regulations in question, uh, the management of health and safety at work regulations and the personal protective equipment at work regulations, are concerned with risks to which employees are exposed while at work. It is provided that an employee is at work for these purposes throughout the time when she is in the course of her employment. It follows that the appellant was at work not only when she was administering care to her clients, but also when she was traveling from one client's home to the next. Thirdly, in relation to the case based on the common law, the inner house criticized the judge for failing to address the questions identified in a case dating from 1909, in which the presiding judge had said that it was necessary to prove either that the thing which the employer did not do was commonly done by other employers, or that it was so obviously wanted that it would be folly in anyone to neglect to provide it. In the view of this court, that approach is outdated and no longer represents the law. The modern law and practice in relation to health and safety at work have created a different context for common law duties from the one which existed before the First World War. In particular, a reasonably careful employer will now conduct a risk assessment in connection with its operations in order to identify risks to safety and what can and should be done to minimize or eradicate them. The employer's duty of care is not, therefore, confined to what is obviously wanted. A negligent omission can result from a failure to seek out knowledge of risks which are not in themselves obvious. Thank you. The court is now adjourned.